Moose, let's go. Let's go. Come on. Load up. Get up in there. So we just got a call for a big, big Nile monitor from what it sounds like in um, some lady's generator room here locally. Martin County and uh, me and Moose are gearing up to haul ass over there right now. Hopefully get this thing and uh, hopefully it is an aisle monitor. Let's, um, before you open that up, let me block this off. I don't want them to be able to escape out of anywhere. Okay. Have you caught any of these before? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. They, um, they are extremely quick and they can get away extremely easily. That's why I'm being real careful. So I use some traps and different things I have with me to block off the exit points of this generator box. Um, I don't want this thing to be able to escape while I'm trying to open the top or wrestle with them. Um, I basically, if, if he's gonna get out, he's gonna have to go through me. Let's take a little peek at him. Oh yeah. <laughs> Beauty. That looks like a big Savannah monitor. Big boy. He is big. Maybe a big black throat. It's is gonna that be... the biggest one you've seen? As that species, yes. <laughs> I've caught a larger Nile monitor than this, but um, as far as I think he might be a black throat, that, that's the biggest. It always amazes me what I find in people's houses. Um, upon further inspection, after looking at this guy, I can tell it's not a Nile monitor. But uh, it is a big ass white throat monitor, and uh, that's a much rarer find. He is a big boy. <laughs> it's gonna be a little tricky to get him, but uh, I, know, I, know. I think it should be easy. We have breeding populations of Nile monitors here in Florida, but we don't really have breeding populations of white throat monitors yet. So um, I'm very happy to be able to get this guy and remove him out of the ecosystem before he starts a population and before we're, we're looking at a whole new issue. And he can get underneath that damn generator too. I'm just having problems reaching him. I got him. And he is strong. He is strong. Um, oh God, he's strong, huh? You? Oh, I wasn't able to. This is a little awkward. Is the problem? I just can't properly reach him. Uh, can I help you with the news? <clears throat> Come on, you mother He's so damn strong. Um, I'm afraid even if I get the noose around his neck, it's just going to be a mess. I don't want to hurt him. Um, if I can maybe push him back out that way, I can, I can work with him a little better. Um, can you grab his tail? Do you see it? I got his head, so he won't bite you. If you can reach under that generator just a little bit and grab that tail. Okay, nice job. Okay. Now, I'm going to let go of his head. Yep. Kind of keep him where you're at and I'm going to come get that tail. Okay. Yeah, he's fine. This thing is important. So yep. Awesome. Nice job, boys. Nice job. We got him now. We got him now. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> He's a strong son of a gun. Give me this arm. Give me this arm. Come on. Come on. I got it. Come on. He's got his tail. I'm holding the cell phone. Yep. You're good. Just keep doing what you're doing. 
God, he's strong. You may grab his tail over here. Nope. Come on. Come on. Golly. I think if I grab him here, I think we can drag him right out. Okay, Tr try to. Or hand me his tail. Hand me his tail. Okay. You got the problem is he grabs everything with his damn arms. There you go. There you go. <laughs> we got him, boys. He is a stud. He is a stud. <laughs> now, I'm going to put him in a bag. Absolutely. This guy got himself in a real tight situation, and it was not easy to get him out of there. He um, got underneath the generator, kind of sprawled his legs out, and just kind of uh, made himself stuck up under there. This guy was a champ. He did not hesitate to help me and grab that tail. He, uh, you know, he looked at me a little bit crazy, but uh, he didn't hesitate. So, uh, big thanks to uh, to a buddy, and uh, you know, it was cool. That's fine. Oh, uh, that red. Yeah, you can actually just leave it running. All right, leave it. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Hell, the homeowner even helped me put him in the bag. Yeah, it's okay, buddy. Yeah, it's okay. That hand in there. I don't want him to come back out on you. Beauty. Thank you very much, yeah, sir. Yeah, he, he was pretty big, wasn't he? He was. He was a good one. So now that I captured this guy, I got to make sure he don't go nowhere. So, um, you know, I have this cage I specifically built uh, to actually contain reptiles like this guy here uh, in the hopes that I'm eventually going to capture one. All right. So I got my Egyptian geese out of this enclosure and into their temporary enclosure by the pigs. Now it's time to let this uh, monitor out, the white throat monitor I recently just caught, and um, let him stretch his legs, get out that bag, get some water, and um, hopefully I can interact him, interact with him a little bit to where I don't seem like the enemy because I'm holding him and keeping him, you know, steady and all that, worrying he's going to escape. Kind of let him roam around and um, you know interact that way and slowly build a relationship like that. So uh, let's go ahead and get him out this bag. Go ahead and close that. Get him out this bag. Let him stretch. Get out. Get my bag all dirty though. Now don't do nothing crazy when I let you out. So this enclosure is going to be really safe for him. He, he won't be able to escape. Um, I got these boards, these metal boards. They go three feet down into the ground, and then on top of that, I got concrete all the way around it on both sides. So it's pretty well secure. He won't be able to dig out. He won't be able to climb out, anything like that. Woo, he's beautiful. What a beauty. Man, oh man. I know, Bubba. So I'm super happy it turned out to be a white throat monitor and not a Nile monitor. Um, I'll be able to use this lizard uh, at my educational shows, take him around the state, show him to people, show him to kids, and uh, try to get them interested in reptiles and uh, conservation. And not only that, you know, ever since I've been a little kid, I've always wanted to have a large monitor like this as a pet. And uh, for me, it's, it's even cooler that I was able to obtain it through, through this way, removing it out of the ecosystem and keeping it as a rescue so it doesn't have to be euthanized. It, uh, it's a win-win for everybody. All right, Bubba. How's it feel to be out that bag? Put a nice plant in the ground for you. Letting him scope out his new enclosure. You know, these reptiles, they are escape artists. And uh, if you don't have the perfect, you know, uh, enclosure, very secure, they can get out. Um, and you'd be surprised how easily that can happen. So, um, you know, I believe that's what happened uh, with this lizard here. Uh, I believe he escaped ne nearby from somebody and he's been living out in the wild for who knows how long. 
um, eating up the native wildlife, the native rabbits, and um, I'm just happy I was able to get them. And you know, that's also a big reason why we have the python problem is from the exotic pet trade. Uh, pythons escaping, pythons getting too big, big where people can't take care of them anymore, releasing them out in the wild. And now, you know, we're looking at an ecological disaster. <laughs> Easy Bubba, don't you hit me with that tail. You know, I'm big on naming all of our rescues and our animals and this white throat monitor earned his pretty damn quick. We decided to call him Fat Boy after watching him eat the first couple of times. This guy is a bee, son. <laughs> son, what a beast. He was hungry. You know, these people get these big reptiles. Um, well, when they get them, they're small and they don't, they don't know what they're getting into. Um, a lot of times, you know, they think it's just gonna be easy. They don't have to pay much attention to it. And that's not necessarily true. Um, you, especially when they get large, you got to be very careful um, with their enclosures and that they can't escape and that you're giving them a proper enclosure. Um, a lot of times, most people, they can't give these big lizards the, the proper housing that they need unless they live at a place like I do. Um, so, you know, people really need to kind of think about what they're getting into before they get these animals because they can get loose, they can, get, they can escape or they can just become too much for you to handle. And then, you know, we have an issue on our hands like we're having here today. Thanks a lot for watching y'all. Really hope you enjoyed it and uh, hope to see y'all next time.